Hi, my name is Emma. I'm a certified Absata specialist, and in this video, I'm going to take you through project statuses, project sources, and project tags. So before we get into templates with Dubsado, I wanted to cover these different things so that it's clear before we get started. So the first thing is project sources. So if you go to your reporting, you'll see project sources. And what that means is basically how are people finding you? So in your lead capture form, which is where this option is available, you can add project sources and ask people where they're finding you. So you can put like Instagram right? You can put Facebook. You can do LinkedIn. Whatever it is, you know, wherever you're present and wherever people are finding you, you can put those options here. So um, let's say referrals. Referral. Uh, You can keep going, right? And so when you create a lead capture form, one of the questions will allow you to pull from this list. You can put the entire list or you can select a few. Um, so you don't have to, not all of them need to be visible. Um, so that's how you would do project sources. So let's go to projects now and talk about project statuses. So project statuses are basically the different stages that people are moving um, through their client process with you. So for leads, for instance, you can see here I have discovery call booked and I have booking. Um, so to customize these, you would just click on this customize button here and say, instead of booking, you can say, you know, proposal sent, right? And then you can add a status that says awaiting payments. And you can move these around however you want. And then, you know, for, for jobs, you can say uh, onboarding as well. So just make sure you click job and put onboarding and it'll show up now under jobs. So you can move this to the front, say onboarding, delivery, offboarding. Um, and this check mark here is the status that you want to appear as the default when you land on your project page. So if what's most important to you is the clients that you're working um, that are in this delivery status, you can check that. And then when you click projects, this is the, these are the projects that are going to show up first. Um, or you can do all jobs the way it was here. Um, one thing that I like to do is basically I like to add emojis to my statuses. I'm a very visual person. So seeing that little icon, I don't even need to read what, what it is. I know what's going on. So like for a discovery call booked, you know, like this. Um, proposal sent, you know, you can do something like that. And so on and so forth. Um, whatever makes sense to you. If you don't want to use them, that's fine. I, I, they just help me a lot. Um, so that's it for project statuses. You're going to create the different stages that makes sense in your client process. You don't want to break it up too, too much either, but like you don't want to see necessarily um, too many people in one grouping. Um, I also have a status that for my leads, that's like not a good fit. Sometimes I talk to people and they're not ready for my services or they're, you know, past the point where they need my services for whatever reason, they're not a good fit. I created that. I have one that's like a no. They basically, I sent them a proposal and they decided not to work with me. So I have that. Eventually I archive those, but um, it helps to have that status to know, you know, that's where they landed. Basically, they went from discovery call book to like a no or a proposal sent to a no, right? For, um, for tags, tags are basically a way of an additional way to categorize your clients. Um, tags will depend on your niche. For some niches, uh, it will make sense to have like a tag per offer. So you can see I have like a six month coaching tag in this example. You can create like a three month coaching tag or a one year, 12 month coaching, um, depending on what offers you're, you have out there. Um, one tag that I use is like a recurring client like a repeat client that helps me see that because there would be no other way for me to categorize 
um, or to have that status. It wouldn't make sense in the project statuses, so I have it as a tag. Um, yeah, it, it just depends on your business, but it's just another way of uh, sorting your clients. And when you do add tags, um, just to show you what it looks like, you see this little dot, it's very subtle, um, but you can filter with uh, tags. So, you know, if you have a lot of people in a different, you know, status, you can filter by tag so that you only see a certain, uh, those people with like the six month coaching tag, for instance. The last thing I want to show you is this columns here. So basically this is just for you to be able to sort and add, you know, whatever views that you want on your project page. So if I click edit, you know, the default sorting view is project date from newest to oldest, but if you wanted to make it oldest to newest, you can do that. If you want to see the client company name, the date they were created, the project source, you can add all of these. Um, even your, your mapped fields will appear here, so you can sort through those. Um, so you can see the default sorting views here, right? So if you want it to be alphabetical, the date created, the project start date, I have it set as project start date because I want to see who is up next in my client, um, you know, pipeline. Uh, you can sort by statuses. So these are all different things that you can do. Just make sure to hit save once that's done. And that's it. Um, so in the next videos, I'm going to start going through the different Dubsado templates and talking through each one individually.